Hey everybody, what's up? I wanted to show you a little uh, something here, a little blow-in that I'm going to do on this Mercedes-Benz. We have a little damage right there. And uh, basically gonna show you a little bit overall of uh, how I go about doing something like this. All right? Okay, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to just tape up some of these edges here like this. So just to minimize as much overspray as I have as I can. You don't have to go crazy, crazy. But basically what you wanna do is you want to just cover up this gap. Because if you don't, you're gonna get overspray on this 100% guarantee. So what you wanna do is you want to just place it in the middle just kind of push down so it's sealed, right? So if, the, if there's any overspray that's gonna go in there, it's just gonna, it's gonna die in there. It's not gonna go anywhere else, right? And then I'm just gonna create, um, actually, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a sheet of plastic to cover the whole entire car. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just make an outline of where I want to tape the, the plastic, all right? So what you wanna do is you wanna kinda stretch it a little bit just to make sure that you're gonna get it nice and tight. Um, and with a razor blade, it's probably better if you use a milk, milk uh, bag cutter, because they, um, they have the plastic behind it, so it's easier to maneuver. But this does the job anyways. So what I do is I basically just cut on the gap. You want to be very careful that you don't scratch anything. So you can just lift it up a little bit. And this works best with a brand new razor blade because then you can just cut it out a lot easier. try to explain it to you so here's here's a piece of tape right okay that's your outline per se um, there if you do it first right you do that and then you put another piece of tape right kind of like to finish it off like this now the problem is that if there's any gaps in here that the overspray is gonna get in there right but if you do it the other way by doing by doing the gap, the uh, the just doing a rough patch first, and then after finishing it off, then and you're spraying that way, then the overspray will not go underneath here because the tape is going is going up. So I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But if if you don't get it, I'll just let me know and I'll make another video about it. Okay.
So now I'm gonna do it a, a finer, and I'm gonna do the, the final the final masking. And uh, I might have to change this after, but maybe not. It's a very small, very small repair that I'm doing. I probably won't even have to prime it. Just a light scratch. I always try to give myself as much room as possible. Um, it, it's like a, it's like in order to keep it small, I give myself as much room as possible, if that makes sense at, at all. Um, but it, it's kind of like the concept of slowing down to speed up. Um, I, I, I feel like it's the same way when you go to do a blowing, is, is just analyzing it Trying to trying to figure out what is it that you're gonna do, how you're gonna go about it. Um, that's very 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 important. Okay, so we got we got it all masked up now. So we got it all masked up. You see the uh, that's a repair right there, tiny. I'm going to try to uh, sand it out, maybe with some 400, and then water sand my way up. Sorry for the shakiness. Okay, so there you go. Um, that's what I'm doing for now. I'm gonna go get some sanding. Okay, so I got you guys. Okay, so I got you guys on my head here. Um, we're going to try to keep this as smooth as possible. The audio is probably a little muffled because I'm not using my other camera. I ran out of battery. So what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> like I said, it's nothing major. It's uh, very very small. I'm gonna use 500. And this is not water paper, but I'm using it as water paper anyways, okay? It's just what works for me. I like using it. Um, gotta get some. So I'm just gonna wet it a little bit, and then we're going to just sand it. Get rid of that marker crap. Okay. And basically what you're aiming for is you want to smoothen it out. You want to get it to feather out. You want to uh, kind of spread that, spread it out. So you want to sand enough that it looks smooth and when you touch it with your finger, then it looks, uh, it, you can't feel it, okay? So we still got a little bit to go there. But like I said, it was a small, very small repair. This is nothing major. So uh, obviously this is a, a fairly simple repair that I, I just wanted to show you guys. So I'm putting medium pressure on this, not, not too much pressure. You wanna let the paper do the work. Okay, that feels smooth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some 800 wet. Okay, and this is wet paper. Um, and you basically what you wanna do is you wanna cancel out um, all these sand scratches, all these 500 sand scratches. And now you're gonna go a little bit farther because you want to um, not only make sure that you get rid of those 500 scratches, but you wanna make sure that you are um, sanding for the base to adhere to the substrate, which is whatever it is that you're painting, is the substrate. So, we got the 500, now we're sanding with 800 wet, okay? And we're trying to smoothen it out a little bit more. And uh, I don't think I will put any primer on this, it doesn't need it. very very smooth so it was a, it's a light scratch okay now if you don't sand it correctly 
right? You're gonna get mapping, you're gonna get it, you're gonna see the outline of that. And that's not what you want. So that's it for 500, uh, I mean for 800. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna piece of, um, we got a piece of 1,000, okay? And I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger. Okay, so like I said before, you want to give yourself lots of room when you're doing a, a blowing, okay? Because you want to keep it as small as possible, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you have um, enough room to do what you have to do, okay? So, that's very, very important. And this is 1,000 uh, tri-sack. And it's a uh, wet paper. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend it right here, right on the corner. Because that's where it's gonna be less noticeable. And if we do it correctly, um, you will not be able to see it. Might need like a tiny little bit of polishing, but you, you're, you're gonna know that it's gonna be very, very, very well. Okay, so we're gonna wipe that just to see how it's going. All right. And you're gonna try to keep everything clean now. Okay. Um, for this sensor, I'm gonna mask it because there won't be a lot of material down there. It's only gonna be clear. So the way that I like to mask this, oh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, the tape thing. It's amazing, I love this tool. It's been around for a long time, but I've never, I never had it. So finally now I have one and it's just like amazing because you just put it on there like that. Um, so here with my nail, I'll cut it out. And if you don't have big nails, you can just razor blade it. But I feel like, I don't know, I, I find it easier with my nail because it just, uh, you can round it off better. I, I know Colad has some some sticker stuff, but this sensor is big, so I'm just gonna do it like this, and it's just sometimes a little faster. So there you go. See, not bad. Just like that. Beautiful. So then you got a nice cut there. Um, I say nice a lot. You guys notice that? All my videos. So then we can sand this, sand it around. Make sure we're gonna get some adhesion on there. And I'm putting quite a bit of pressure when I'm sanding with this 1000. Um, especially on an on a way I'm finished, you wanna press hard when you're uh, doing 1000 because the OEM finishes are very, very, very strong and they're very brittle, so you need to make sure you're sanding correctly. I'm gonna get a gray pad, gray scotch bright pad. I'm gonna go over what you did with 1000, but now you're gonna go into these edges, try to get in there as much as possible, okay? That way you're not gonna have to worry about peeling and uh, any issues like that. And then you can go to sleep and have a good night's sleep knowing you did the best job you possibly could with what you were given to you. And that's extremely important in my life anyways. So. Okay, so let's go over a little bit like that. Light. Okay, beautiful. Okay, well that's kind of like the easy part. And Wipe it. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, we're gonna get some uh, 5,000, no, some 3,000. And here, let's, let's finish this off.
I'm not gonna have much spraying over here so it doesn't have to be perfect but you do want to seal it like seal it as in uh, make sure that there won't be any overspray going on around here the tape slides so nice on this it's amazing it's so good I think this is one of the most underrated tools of in this trade to be honest Okay. They have one for this, but they're on its way. I just bought one. So I'm excited to try that. Okay. here slide it in there nice boom peel that back okay that's good so now we got that good always with clean hands making sure this is gonna be okay for paint all right um, 3,000 I like to do 3,000 and 5,000 I'm gonna use these little pieces because we don't need to waste a big piece. Ow! That hurt. Okay, wet it. And you're gonna go over a little bit overlap on the 1000 and you're gonna go a little farther now with the 3000 all right and what this is gonna do is it's going to give the blender an amazing beautiful comfortable bed to lay down on okay you know. All right. Okay, and like I said, give yourself lots of room so you don't have to worry about the blender peeling. So the blender is very, very thin, so it can adhere to those 3,000 scratches. The clear coat will have a little bit of an issue adhering to the 3,000 scratches, and that's why you want to finish it with 1,000, right? For your clear coat, and then when you transition with the thousand to the three thousand, that's where you do your blender. Okay. I hope that I'm explaining this in a way that you guys could understand. Because uh, sometimes my wife doesn't really understand when I speak. Okay, so I feel it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get something uh, a little different. Well, I got some spray mask. Uh, primer. This is dark gray, so we're good for this. You want to make sure that this is shaking up really, really well. I'm gonna just put another piece of tape here because so all the sanding and made the thin the tape thinner. So, okay, so this is a little trick I learned from. Uh, Refinish Network, my buddy Justin. I saw him do this on a video the other day, in an old, very old video. And uh, I thought it was really neat and smart. So I don't know where he learned it from, but I think it's great. So. Perfect. So we're gonna put that over like that. Just hover on top of it. Put a light coat like that. 
we'll dry real quick. Perfect, that's covered. Now you get a nice soft edge, like, because of this. So you hover it on top, right? And then you get a nice soft edge that you can sand it off nicely. So that's it. Um, gonna let that dry. What does the can say? 15 to 20 minutes at 70 degrees. So I'm gonna turn this up to 100 degrees and that's gonna be dry real quick. All right, everybody, I had to jump in here and just apologize for my, like I mentioned in the video that I was using a different camera. So what happened is that um, my camera, when you when I turn it on, I usually use this camera for time lapses. So when I turn it on, it automatically goes to time lapse setting, and I didn't double check, so please forgive me. So I'm just going to walk you through what I did here. I know it looks, it looks uh, all messed up, and... Uh, it's a it's a fast time lapse, but since I slowed it down, it looks all skippy like that and all messed up. But anyways, I, I'm gonna try my best to just you know make sure you guys get what I'm doing here. So I water sanded it with 800, and all I'm doing now is after I water sand it, I'm I, I have clean hands, believe me, and uh, I just cleaned it very well. And now I'm I I blew it to make sure that you get all the water out of there if there is any water there and uh, just blew it and just kind of felt it with my hand to make sure that there's nothing that I miss sometimes you know running your hand through it would be the best thing you could do unless you have dirty hands and don't do that okay so um, so that's what I did now I'm washing it with a uh, prime wash which is a degreaser it's better to wash it with uh, water and then with the degreaser I think it, it works really really well Everybody does it different, but like I always tell you guys, whatever works for you, just keep doing it, right? So now I'm blowing myself off, I'm blowing the car off really well with the tag rag and making sure that there's going to be nothing. So what you want to do is you want to keep it small, okay? You see how it's small, I'm keeping it, and I'm spraying towards the wheel per se, right? Because I don't want any base over spray on the blend. So I want to make sure that you're getting all the base as far away as possible for from where you're gonna blend your clear that is truly 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 like the most the most uh, if you get anything out of the video is that make sure you do not put any overspray base on your blend because then it will never polish so now I'll put one coat of clear and I did it only to the um, okay I'm gonna have to slow this down again please forgive me for all this junk um, Anyway, so I put the first coat of clear, and I went right up to the to where the, the the corner there, and then my second coat of clear, I went a little bit farther, so we're like right at the corner. Okay, so it's just before the corner, with the first coat of clear, and then the second coat of clear on the corner. Now, because I have that beautiful substrate there, of uh, three thousand, um, you see how I went right to the corner there. So now when I got the the perfect substrate there for 3000 and the blender is going to blend in right beautiful there and then I realized that my camera screwed up and then I'll show you guys how it looks like all right there you have it look at that we won't even have to polish this it looks so good see you can't even hear the overspray you know sometimes you can hear it it's great so that's it. I mean, I don't know what else to say. The prepping, the prepping is extremely important. We'll just do a little bit of polishing here, right? Because it's a little bit of overspray there. But I won't need any sanding. This thing just, it's beautiful. So that's it. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope that's useful. And uh, I hope that you get a chance to subscribe and give a thumbs up. All right. Love you. Take care. God bless. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. And I apologize for my screw up with the camera. Um, like I always tell you guys, I'm not a videographer or anything like that. I just try my best to do the best I can with what I'm given. Um, anyways, I love you so much. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're still watching, I appreciate it.
okay? And uh, don't forget to subscribe, it means a lot to me. And uh, share this video, if you can share this video with your friends, and uh, even my last video, that would be so cool. Um, yeah, so I love you. Take care. God bless. Peace.